at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Years of bloodshed and tears and work and perseverance. But we finally obtained our independence. A deep religious impulse runs of the doctrine of separation of church and state. The Declaration of Independence states that we have God-given rights. Not state-given rights, not king-given rights, not government-given rights, but God-given rights. And that the government's function is to protect those rights that a government could never give us. And among them was the most sacred rights that we have is the freedom of religion. The first time in U.S. history of a presidential administration that's chosen to use the words freedom of worship instead of freedom of religion. It's a dangerous shift to phraseology. It's a big difference between freedom of worship and freedom of religion. Freedom of worship is the freedom to do whatever you want with your faith behind the walls of your church. There's a lot of countries that have freedom of worship where you can be killed for publicly practicing your faith. Freedom of religion, it's a little more than that. To protect the freedom of religion, the founding fathers of this great nation wrote the First Amendment to the Constitution, which states that, quote, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. That means the government can't force one religion over another. It also means that the government has to be hands off when it comes to our faith. Somehow we've come to interpret the freedom of religion and the separation of church and state to, to mean the exact opposite. To mean that the public square has to be freed from the presence or the influence of religion. It's out of control. I and mean, that's partly, that misperception about the separation of church and state is partly why people can express any crazy idea they want to in a public high school today, but somehow it makes national news if somebody wants to say a prayer during a commencement ceremony. It's why President Obama has told institutions that they have to provide health care that conflicts with their faith, that they can't let their faith inform the kind of health care they buy for their employees. It seems that people can bring any crazy conviction they want to the public square today, but if it's a religious conviction, especially if you're bringing those convictions into politics, you're marginalized, you're written off as an extremist. Guys, that's never what was intended by the Founding Fathers who put that wall of separation between church and state. The Founding Fathers of our nation were people who let their faith inform everything they did. You can see that carved into the very architecture of our capital. Thomas Jefferson, the third president of the United States, asked the question, can the liberties of a nation be secure when we remove the conviction that those liberties are a gift from God? That question is carved right into the wall of his memorial. Andrew Jackson, seventh president of the United States, said the Bible is, quote, the rock upon which this republic rests. There are two climate-controlled cases in the Library of Congress. Each houses a massive Bible. Moses holding the Ten Commandments is featured prominently on the pediment outside of the Supreme Court building. He's also carved inside facing the judges' benches. The Lincoln Memorial quotes his Gettysburg Address where he said that this nation shall have a new birth of freedom under God. And the Washington Monument, the highest building in Washington, D.C., has the words carved into the top, Laos Dei, which means praise God. Of course, none of that means that we have a theocracy, but we have a state where people can express their faith anywhere without apology. If we don't have that, we have an atheocracy. That's not freedom at all. The greatest figures in our nation's history weren't people who thought they had to keep their faith private and quiet. There were people who were open about the fact that it informed everything they did. I think of the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. He didn't come to this nation's capital and march here as a secularist, humanist, political idealist. He came here as a preacher of the Word of God. With all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands. Separation of church and state doesn't mean that our faith has no place in a public square. It means that we can express it anywhere. <laughs>